Hello guys, this is Sumit Pandit and welcome to 11 Minute Python. It's an advanced tutorial and those who are beginners, please watch my previous series. We'll be doing here come some good stuff with Python and let's have fun. In this episode, we'll learn about system module. I'll be using Linux terminal and IPython for this series. If you haven't installed IPython, then please install it with command pip install IPython. If you want to see it, I can show it here. And if you don't know what PIP is, then please search it and then come back here. Our first example for this episode is about system module. So let me start my IPython shell. And let me import it. What we'll do, what we will be doing here is to get the version of Python. So with the system module, you can get Python version with this module Python version info. So this shows us what are the major version and which release is installed. So for me, the release is 3.6.5. Now you will be asking me the question like, I have, I know I, while typing the shell or starting it, what version is Python, then why I should go and use this sys.version info. So the thing is that if you there are two major versions of Python, one is Python 2 and one is Python 3. So if you are writing some script or some code for Python 3 and you want to check at the start of the code only that it should work only for Python 3, then you can use it for this check. And there can be some other, I have just given an example. So now there is another thing which we need to see is the DIR function. So DIR function just lists the names of the all the modules and method which we have. For example, if I do DIR sys, then it returns me all the functions which I can use with this model. For example, let's go with sys dot platform. What does it shows? So it gives us on which platform which we are we are working. So if you are on Windows platform, it will show Windows or Mac or Mac. Currently Linux. I am working on Linux platform, so it is Linux. And apart from that, what I can see is we can also get see get recursion limit. So now the recursion limit is whatever the maximum that our Python interpreter stack can reach. So if, if you are running a script and it goes into the infinite loop, then it is the maximum that 3000. Also, we can set the maximum that as per our own choice by using set recursion limit and then we can do it like 4000 although there is limit to this number if you try some higher values maybe it can break and it will not allow you to set the recursion limit let, let us check if it has done the recursion limit or not yeah it has changed the recursion limit apart from this what i can talk about is path module so this is sys dot path and so says but dot path model is the it shows whatever the directories which we have included or the path which we are included for our Python interpreter to look for modules. So in this case, these are the list of directories which we have currently. And if you want to add it, then you can do sys dot path dot enters insert since this is in list. And if you have your Custom models, if you are working on your custom projects and modules, and if you want to include that directly from the in the project, then please insert it. Or you can also use environment or bash.rc file. We'll cover one more important functionality, which is sys.argv. So sys.argv model is the one which uses command line parameters. So if you are writing a script, on day to day basis, or if you want to write a script with command line parameters, then this is the model which is go to model and it comes very handy. There are other models too which we can use, but for now, let's see uh, this model. But before that, let me show you help function. Help function is also very important, it prints all the doc strings which are available and implemented in the class, so that's why it's very important whenever you are writing any module or functionality to use as much uh, doc strings available and so that whenever if any user sees uh, 
uh, help and the object then it shows whatever the whatever the written items or whatever that method is doing so let us now try to write a script i will move to the directory desktop and we'll create our first file and let us name it as first script.py what i can here do is that i will import this module so program name so or file name is always so start argv0 so first element of the list is file name now after that what we can do here is that we can also try to print the uh, print the length of the arguments so total number of args equals to ln of so dot arg and after that what we can do here is that uh, we can also get all the arguments all args equals to string now let us print here okay and total number of arguments is Arguments supply to script is uh, all arguments. Let us save this program. Let me try to run. So, by default, our program name is firstscript.py, and we haven't supplied any arguments so total number of argument is one and all arguments applied to script is only the first script.py which is the name of the file if we do right now first script.py hello and then one well. so if you, you can see here is that now it is saying total number of arguments as three and it is first script.py hello and world so hello and world is the second and third argument so zeroth element first element and second element So now let's add some more parameters to script and we'll modify it. So this script will now check if length of total argument is not equal to three. Then it will exit with status. We can use zero or one, but we can also pass our statement so we'll pass here no proper argument is being passed and after that what we can do here is we can provide uses uh, which says db name and app name so this will exist with this error if it doesn't find total number of argument equal to three. So let us save the script and we can run it once again. See, uh, we can see here is that it is saying no proper argument pass Python script but we write db name. Now if we pass only db name, for example, if example db, it still throws an error. Let us pass example app and it doesn't throw an error. So in this way, we can implement total number of arguments that needs to be passed. There are more, day more method checks which we can do. So here we end our first episode. Please let me know your thoughts on this video. Also comment if you want me to cover any special topic on Python. Thanks. Bye.